All righty. Hey, everyone. This is Corinne Lafon, your favorite radio host, your only radio host and favorite girl, of course, broadcasting to you from the lovely island of Trinidad and Tobago in the Caribbean on Between the Lines. And you know I start my show up always being grateful or thankful, as some may say, just for being here, smelling the fresh air. Rain just fell here in Trinidad, so the air is fresher than before. It's a bit overcast, but I really don't care. I love it anyway. It's cool. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I'm just thankful to experience that. And I have with me Tiangelo Bell, pretty handsome young man. Oh, anybody you're too looking, kind. Thank you. <laughs> anybody who's looking at him, he's taken. Forget it. Don't, don't even think about it. Okay. <laughs> handsome young man. And let me tell you what we're talking about today. Go through hell. Now, for a handsome young man, he's telling you to go through hell. I don't understand that. Go through hell so you don't get stuck in it. I really don't get that. But we'll find out what he means a little bit later. Let me tell you a bit about Tiangelo. For over a decade, lifestyle architect Tiangelo has been motivating women to design a life so amazing. They can taste the fabulousness. Mm. As a multi-award winning speaker, Tiangelo has a burning passion for guiding, mentoring, and empowering women to design a life they love. Hello, please. All the women need to be listening to this. The male girlfriend's ultimate goal is to leverage a variety of platforms to encourage women to live life to the fullest. Using the method, dream it, plan it, live it. Three steps to your success. Oh my God, I'm going to love talking to Tiangelo. Tiangelo, welcome to Between the Lines. Well, good. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Good morning to you. And how are you doing, beautiful? Uh, oh my God, you got me stuck there with the beautiful. I forgot what you said before that. What, what, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> I was just stuck at a beautiful. I didn't hear anything else before. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I am I am wonderful and fabulous. Thank you very much. How are you? I am splendid. And it's interesting because it's an overcast here as well today. So I guess we're sharing weather. Uh, don't go there, Tiangelo. I told people don't look you. You're not you're not single anymore. As of this moment, you're no longer single. Forget <laughs> it. <laughs> Okay, all right. As of this moment, you're no longer single. So when we finish this show, if any woman contact you, tell them, please reach out to me. Go through me first. Okay? Oh, okay. We can do that. We can do that. See? We can do that. This is how you do it, people. You don't, you, you know, you find a man who don't quarrel, who don't resist. He understands you. He works with right. you. Yeah. I mean, we're, t we're totally connected. We're, we're totally connected. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Tiangelo. The male girlfriend. What the hell is that? Let's start with that. What do you mean the male girlfriend? So over the course of my life, I like inherently would always be helping my girlfriends um, move forward and get to their dreams and goals. And some of them would think it wasn't possible. And I was like, I don't understand not possible. <laughs> and so over the course of life, it just kind of evolved where I was always hanging out with ladies. I'm a professional dancer, so I was always with dancer chicks. Yeah. And um, then my girls would be talking to me, and they'd be so comfortable. They'd be like, oh, girl, let me tell you. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry, T. I'm, I'm sorry, T. <laughs> and so, <laughs> right. After years and years of that, it was like, well, T, you're just a male girlfriend, so come on out to girls' night. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, so <laughs> at first I was like, no, that's not a good idea. But then I embraced it. Like, it's cool because it's just a homeboy who happens to understand, you know, a different perspective on the women's journey. And then for the parts I don't understand, I love to learn mm -hmm. and then find other expert industry people who can come in and share that advice and those tricks and tips with my girlfriends. And so... Here I am, Tiangelo, the male girlfriend. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And, and I will tell you this, straight up, straight up, and I don't care what anybody says. When okay. a man is able to connect in that way with a woman, look here, it is sexy. You uh, understand. 
understand a woman. You know, when we talk, you get what we are saying. I don't have to explain. And I'm like, what? Right. you don't understand. You know, or you interpret it in, in, in a different way. And we're like, how the hell did you get there? That's not what I said. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Literally, I mean, I'm a mama's boy. So that kind of came with my packaging. My yeah. grandmother, my grandmother is one of my top friends. I talk to granny like three times a week. And when I get done with this, I have to call her to get an update on what happened yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> and so... I'm just surrounded by beautiful women. And then my friends are just beautiful women. And once I learned that I had the ability to help people, mm -hmm. you know, find their happiness, get closer to their goals and aspirations, I was like, okay, you know what, God? I see you. I see you. <laughs> I see you and he sees you. He sees right, you. Right. He, right. you. he gave you that gift. And just like you said before, don't resist. You know, you're like, no, that don't sound right. And then you're like, Hell yeah, I'm gonna do this. You you exactly. got the in. You got the in. You don't have to fight like the men. I'm sure men are saying, boy, how do you know these women? How do you get right. in with these women? I wanna get to meet these women. And to make it even better, I mean, we have something in common again, Tiangelo. You're a dancer, oh. I'm a dancer. I do Latin and ballroom dancing. Oh. Oh I'm here for it. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This well, is what I'm telling well, you. Well, I'm probably ready you too, Miss LaFont. <laughs> So you know when we connect, you know we need to hang out. I'm all for it. I need to come to Trinidad. I haven't been there yet, so I truly look forward to it. Add it to the list. Add it to the list. Add it to Where the is list. my pen? Somebody get me a pen <laughs> so I can add it to the a, a pen. <laughs> add I that to that. the list. <laughs> add it to the list. Yeah. No, this is awesome. It's it's very sexy to find a man that can connect with a woman. I mean, I was talking to a man the other day, you know, and when, when women are going through, you know, not, not to be geeky or icky about this topic, but our menstruation, right. our monthly time, you know how we women get, you know how right. we, yeah. And I'm saying to him, boy, I, I can't hear, I can't see. I don't understand anything you're saying really. I, you know, <laughs> you know, not, Basically, I, you said I can't, you just write, I can't right now. I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. I can't. right, right. I can't. I, Okay. He's like, he's like, Corrine, I, I totally understand. I'm, I'm a round woman. I know exactly what is happening. And right. I'm, yeah. That is so cool that you understand. So he knows, don't text me. Don't call me. Because you would tell me something and I would not see the words. I, I, I would see something else. I would read, you know, it, 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 it's, it's like, I don't hear. I don't see. I don't understand. What are you saying? You know, I read things that are not there. And sometimes you just have those kind of days. And so I'm it's allowed. very. I'm allowed. Right. Yes, definitely. You're a woman. Here you <laughs> roar. And today, that's what the call is. The call is, I can't. I so can't. That's, that's that. That's, <laughs> Accept that's it, it and let's that's move what on. That's it is. And he just <laughs> it. Yeah, and he just, he said, Corinne, I, I totally understand. And he just left it there. That's all he said. I totally understand. Now, there are some men who would totally stay away from you completely. It's like you, you, you're, you're the plague. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you're the plague. You know, you can kill me. You're in that, in that time where you can kill me and I'm not staying near you. No, it's not oh that. We just need to know. Well, yes, we don't Love want it. you. No. <laughs> no, no, we don't want you getting killed. Just take your, no. your I can't day. And I'm, listen, I have um, a part, it's like, I can't is another thing that I actually, I talk about mm -hmm. with my girlfriends and it kind of replies more to dating, but I'm going to kind of turn it a bit to fit okay. this conversation. But basically there are times when you have to accept what you can and can't do. Yeah. And when you say I can't, it just kind of means you're not available. You know, yeah. you're not always available for everything, for everybody. And so when, you're, when your emotions are tied up somewhere else, you just have to simply say, listen, I love you, but right now, I can't. I can't. That's I it. Can't. I can't. I can't. As simple as and that. Then, you, don't need, you don't need to and, and then, Right, and, be, and feel as women like you sometimes, because you all are nurturers, you feel like it's selfish or like it's not okay to say. It is okay to say. I it's say better to say, I can't up front, mm -hmm. then I'm going to kill you later on. <laughs> I think that sounds a little bit better. I can't versus I'll kill you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, yeah. A, that's a better option. <laughs> I can't. I just, I just can't. I, just I can't, can't possibly. I just that's can't. Right. I can't. You can say it in all the different ways you wish, but it's right. still down to I can't. 
leave me alone right Boom. now. Don't speak to me. I can't. Right? There it is. There, there it, is. it is. So go through hell so you don't get stuck in it. Why are you See? encouraging us to go through hell? And uh, you, you don't know, really we get stuck in it. Because you don't really have a choice to go through it or not. Hell on earth is gonna come to you one way or another. <laughs> That sounds dismal, Angelo. Oh, my God. It's just a part of this thing called life. So since you know it's going to appear, I'm tr I, am, I am advocating for you to go through it yeah. so you don't live in it. And it's, you know, going through hell is like a season. You know, if you think about the winter season when it's cold and it's harsh and all the food is dried up and, you know, it's freezing cold temperatures. If you just stand the test of time and really stay focused on your goals and journeys and move forward, eventually the season of winter will pass. Yeah. But yeah. some people get confused with these uncomfortable hellish like moments and they start building homes in hell. They start getting <laughs> comfortable. They start buying hellish clothing. They just, and then they want to call themselves a victim. No, yeah. you the one moved into that neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> so ultimately the whole concept is when hard times when hardship happens don't get stuck there even if it's an emotional moment take your moment yeah. and then move through just move it along move it along move, move along. it along move it along yeah move it along you know and that is an important thing and i've never seen and i've said this on many of my of my uh, interviews i've never seen a phrase that says stop in hell or or it says go go and stop Right. It never says go and stop. It's like go don't. through. That's the phrase. Go through, which means it's a continuous journey. There's no stop. Right. You right. just keep going. There's no go and stop. It's always go through. Go through this. Go through the door. Go right. through. Go that. through. Go you through. have to go through it. And so if it's like, <clears throat> like a weight loss journey, if it's an entrepreneurial journey, if it's a higher education journey, if it's a health journey, if yeah. it's self-development, whatever it is going to be, if it's the divorce, yeah. if it's the, um, the, the parents, you know, health is fading. All these different parts of our lives can be difficult and challenging. But like I have people or I know people and some of the guests, I mean, the listeners will get into a hard place and just be like, oh, what's happening to me? Oh, what's happening to me? Oh, what's happening to me? And then 16 months later, oh, what's happening to me? Oh, what's <laughs> okay, it's, no, girl. Yeah. No, it's not happening to you. You are happening to you. <laughs> to it. <laughs> yeah, they're not going through hell. They're, they're, they're pitching tents. They're checking right. the stores. They're checking out the stores. They're, they're buying the hellish clothing. You're absolutely right. They are so I, buying I, the hellish clothing. Yeah, I, I, didn't know, <laughs> I didn't know that brand existed. Now that I know, I, I would know. I would know and, I'm not buying that. And, and now that you know that it exists, boo, I want you to start watching out for people who are wearing it. Oh, damn. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, right. So yeah, know can, the brand. So, Recognize the so brand. you can spray oh, yourself with something to keep them away from you because you don't <laughs> want that hellish energy. Yeah. No, I recognize them. Believe me, Tiangelo. Oh, I recognize boom. them. I recognize boom. them. Really, and I, I use this thing called delete and block. You know, I don't know if you've heard about it. It's called delete no. and block. It's pretty easy. Okay, please tell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on your phone. It's on your phone. <laughs> yeah, it's on your phone. Oh, literally. Delete literally. it and <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's called delete and block. And it's pretty, pretty easy. It's not hard to do, really. It's just a press of the button. You know, delete okay. and block. Mm. You, know, you know, honestly, the hard part about that delete and block part is mm -hmm. that I think we get in our own heads sometimes and feel like that's rude or what are they going to think about me uh -huh. or, you know. Really? But I don't have that. I, I don't have that. I, I don't know if there's something different with me, but. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have that. I don't have that. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because you see, I, I am in a, at a point where I think if you're not adding value to my life, and this might sound selfish, I really don't care. But if you're not right. adding value to my life, Right, and I, I would say the same in reversal for anybody. If I am not adding value to your life, delete and block me. I am not delete. going to be offended. I'm, I'm good. I'm right. Good. You do you, and if you feel I'm not bringing right. something to you in the same way as you are not bringing something to me, I should be able to do that. It's my damn phone. It's my life. I decide who I want to be in my life. I'm for yeah. it. Yeah. I'm for it. 
I think I'm not, that's I'm not exactly just doing it. Doing. Yeah, I'm not just doing it to people. I want people to do it to me if they feel right. I am not bringing something to them. You're not supposed people. to be holding on, holding on to people and things if if it's not helping you to progress to, to the next le level. Yeah. I have a friend of mine who we're dear friends and we've gone, you know, back years and years, but through the course of time, I've noticed how we don't really feed each other like we used to, like the energy just isn't yeah. the same. Yeah. And I have felt like, well, I can't really cut you off because we have so much time together. Yeah. And so I didn't delete or block, but what I did was allow life to do its thing. That's and we started right. talking yeah. further and further apart. Mm -hmm. And now we don't really connect that often because yeah. the, it's, it's just not there. Fine. And that's fine. And this is what they talk about the season. You know, everybody has a season and a reason in your life. And there right. may be a point when that friend of yours may connect back with you for whatever it is you're brought back together. The universe decides, I need to connect Tiangelo and his friend again. You know, and that's fine. And it may be temporary. I have friends who I haven't right. spoken to in months, years. Right. And we were saying off air, it doesn't matter the distance. You know, we come back and it's like we pick up where we left off. It, it doesn't matter. That's the kind of friendship we have. Not because somebody doesn't talk to you every day or check in on you or know what's going on with you. Life happens. And, right. and we, have to, we have to be flexible with that. But I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about the sort of toxic, all the takers, you know, the people right. that are here to take, 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 use you, abuse you, manipulate you. you need, those you, are the ones. Yeah. You, you shouldn't hesitate. You shouldn't no. hesitate. Because they're not doing anything for you. And What's it's not you? Yeah, exactly. And, and, and you, you know it. Your intuition tells you this. You know it. And you feel uncomfortable. And it's like, no, some, something is off here. And then you have to ask yourself the question, why am I still holding on to this? You realize that you're codependent. It's like, I am, I am, I am still holding on to the love of this person or the so-called love. I need this person. There, you don't need that. Wow. You don't need it. And when you look around, when you look around your circle, D'Angelo, and you realize you look left, right, up, down, is the same type of people. No. Right. And that's, and see, and that's another part about the whole going through hell. When it's kind of like, if you're in that space that's not most positive and you start meeting new people and you start calling them your new friends because they understand you mm -hmm. in a way that your old friends or your old family doesn't, that's not that they understand you. It's that, it's that they reside in that hellish environment. They're wearing so, the hell brand. They're wearing the right. hell brand. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and when I think people, yeah. And when people start telling you, oh, you think you're, you're all that on a bag of chips. You, you oh, my God. On. Yeah, you've moved on. You think, you, you think you're beyond us. When people start right. telling you that, I, I look at it as, I thank you for that. That means to say I've grown, but you're still in the same place. What's up with that? Mm -hmm. Right. And I think this is a perfect point where I would tell uh, my girlfriends to work with my method of dream it, plan it, live it. Because with the three steps to success being to dream it, plan it, and live it, that is the chance that you get to map. At first, you get to create. Because to dream it means to gain clarity. So okay. you get a chance to create whatever it is you want to achieve or have in your life. And then to plan it is where we talk about designing a detailed proposal for you to reach that thing that you wanted and then to live it oh it's so beautiful you create your success habits you start having fun and realizing that all the work and all the sweat and tears mm -hmm. have come to fruition and make it all worth it so beautiful get through hell so we can work on that dreaming planet live it and get you to live in your best life that's right that? that <laughs> <laughs> I love that. How about that. I want you to share with me some of your clients or like the ones that really stood out to you that you've taken them from hell, from hell, right? To where yes. they're living their best life now. And, and we're looking at these two, two different phases. Okay. And when they look back, what are they saying to themselves now? Give us, okay. give us, give us, your, give us your favorite stories with some of your clients. <laughs> When they look back and, and they're looking, you know, in the mirror of the, of the past and they're like, who the hell was that? Who the, what? Right. Yeah. Tell, tell, share with us what's going on because I want this to connect with women who may be in hell or about to enter hell. You know, you know, they're kind of, mm -hmm. they're kind of scouting around the window shopping. They're not really in hell totally yet. They're still window shopping, you know, 
and and right, but they, they're getting but they there. see it coming. Yeah, they, they see it coming. coming. <laughs> they see it coming, and they're afraid to do something. You know, they don't want to spend the money in the hell shop. You know, but they're window shopping, and they're just posting around. And they see okay. coming, but they're afraid. They're afraid to go right. to that hell. They, they, you know, something is stopping them. Tell us some of the, the stories where you've taken people from pre-hell, hell, and they've come out of it. <laughs> right. Okay. Beautiful. So we're going to call this girlfriend Rebecca to, rep to uh, you know, respect my girlfriend's privacy. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, Rebecca is uh, a lady of particular age. So she was coming like through her mid forties, coming out of that. She had had her kids. She had had the marriage, had went through the divorce already. So she was kind of like established in life. She wasn't brand new to it. And so after she had gotten her master's degree, she's now feeling like, who am I? I don't, I don't have, I don't, she lost herself in motherhood. She lost herself in the marriage. Now she went into school and thought that would give her what she needed, but then she still felt lost and didn't feel valuable and, you know, just had nothing to give. So she thought. Yeah. And so the first exercise that I did with her, because at this point, her hellish place was self, you know, she yeah. wasn't able to see herself as amazing. Mind you, I'm like, girl, you raised four beautiful kids who are dipping it and doing it. You got <laughs> out of that marriage. That was toxic. Like that's, that's, something people stay yeah. in those in that toxic place she did that and then you went off to school and got your master's and your bachelor what 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 how are you what huh <laughs> she just couldn't see it okay <laughs> so the first exercise i did with her was i told her three times a day minimum minimum three times a day simply say i am amazing that's it i'm gonna practice I, that right now I am, yes. I'm going to add to it. I'm damn amazing. I'm fabulous. Boom. Stop me. Stop I me. Am damn stop amazing. Me <laughs> yes. You say that to yourself three times a day, minimum. You can do more. But the reason I start with that is because in life, we, our mental always says negative stuff to us. Yeah. We always are knocking ourselves down. And in the world that we live in, it's always telling you that you're not tall enough. You're not yeah. small enough. You're not yeah. light enough. Yeah. You don't have big enough breasts that, you, <laughs> you, that your teeth are wrong. They're always knocking you down. Yeah. And so for me, when you tell yourself just minimally three times a day to give yourself a compliment, you're combating all the negatives. So I'm trying to just take the scale and mm -hmm. shift it a bit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so what was so exciting about her journey was she did that exercise for about five, well, she had started it. Four days into it, she called me and said her morning prayer partner, who talks to her every morning, said, girl, what is different about you? You just seem so different. Mm. So in four days, she already started to see the change inside of herself, mm -hmm. simply by recognizing and telling herself, you are amazing. Mm -hmm. And her, her journey continues. So she went from there into there. We had to get on, we had to sit down, get a pen and pad out and write out what I call a lifestyle, um, lifestyle design. Mm -hmm. So we design out the lifestyle that you want from the house to the income, to the, tr the, the traveling, to the car, to no, the no. life insurance. I'm going to stop you right there. What do you mean lifestyle design? People design houses, oh. Angelo. No, no, oh. no. People design houses. Okay. People design, have an idea of the car they want to buy. Okay. You know, the design of the clothing, the store they want right. to go into. You, you, you're right. talking lifestyle design. Who the hell sits down and, and, and decides and works out a design of your lifestyle? Are you crazy? You do that yeah. for a house. Okay, okay, I need a three-bedroom house with a pool, <laughs> a nice patio, you know, and these are the color schemes. They could design every other shit except lifestyle, their, their own lifestyle. That is not an agenda, Tiangelo. So I don't understand you. What do you mean lifestyle? Right. Right. Okay, perfect. Yes, perfect. So as the lifestyle architect, that's what I do. I help you design and build the life you want to live. So let me tell you how we do it. <laughs> Basically, I'm, I get so excited about this because it's so much fun. <laughs> the thing is, people do take time to develop a house from the ground up. And when they develop a house, the number one thing they start with is the, the foundation, not the cement, the dirt. They start with the dirt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. And if the dirt's not right, they dig that up and put in the proper dirt. Okay? That's, right. That's right. That's right. So then you start to work on the rest of the building. And so when I work with my girlfriends about their lifestyle, we start off with what kind of life do you want? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the house, the car, the, the travel, the insurance, the income, the family, mm -hmm. the pets. 
um, <laughs> education. We yeah. talk about all of it and we yeah. write it all down mm -hmm. so you can see it. And I'll let you go away. You can go away and deal with this on your own. Then we come back to the table and talk about it. But allow your imagination, allow that young girl That's who was right. who was impressionable and didn't know boundaries, mm -hmm. let her live for a moment and write out what you want. Yeah. And then we take that and turn it into a more realistic plan. Because, of course, sometimes you get carried away. You know, sometimes you get carried away. <laughs> so we got to, you know, yeah. pull it together. We got to tweak it. We got to tweak it. Right. But... <laughs> It's, 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 not, uh, it's not unreachable. And kind of a sidebar, I have a niece, and at the time, she was about 11 years old, maybe, and um, she lived a not as uh, financially strong lifestyle as I would have preferred. Her family just didn't have that mm -hmm. as a perk. So mm -hmm. when she would hang with me for the summer, I would take her over to Beverly Hills, and I live in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So I would take her over to Beverly Hills, and the goal was to show her this stuff it's right down the street. It's right down the street. <laughs> it's right it down the street. It's open it's, to you. It's available to you. It's right there. Like it's right over. If you look right, right there. there, it's like right there. <laughs> right there. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. So going back, when you work with the lifestyle design, it allows you to allow your creative self, allow the id inside, allow your brain to just it, it, take whatever it wants and put it on paper. And then you don't have to say, I can't do anything. You can do it all. Now, you have to pay the price. If you want to go from 300 pounds down to, you know, 175, you got to pay the price. Yeah. Which is changing that diet, adding that workout, yeah. learning to fall in love with water. If yeah. you want to pay the price. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you want to become the psychiatrist who helps young women Okay, fine. You got to pay the price of the education. Yeah. No more late nights dipping it and doing it with the girls. Yeah, yeah. So when you talk about lifestyle design, we really just make it a point to write down what you want. And I'm really big on adding travel. Like of my lifestyle design, I personally have one big trip and three small getaways a year. Nice. That's on my design. Mm -hmm. And so when I got into my relationship, he knew, he, he found out, you have to know this because this is what we're going to be doing. So, and then what kind of home do you want? Do you want a sky rock, a, 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 a penthouse? I'm trying mm -hmm. to say sky rise. Oh, apartment and a sky rise. There we go. <laughs> or do you want farmland? Yeah. You know, do you want kids? Do you not? All of that information you want to just put out there. So you know where you're heading. You know what you're looking to accomplish. And then when you go into, let's just say, a new job or whatever, if what they're trying to give you, like they want you to sit in this one position for four or five years, if that don't match up with your plan, hold you up, can't do that. Hold up, Tiangelo, but hold on. I'm thinking to myself, you work with me. We, are, we, okay. we, we come up with a lifestyle design. Okay. And here I am meeting, meeting this man I'm dating. And I okay. come to him with, with this thing about lifestyle designs. So I'm like, hey, sweetie, so what's your lifestyle design? He'd be like, what? Right. <laughs> what? What? Okay. And he, he ain't have none. He ain't have none. No, he, don't understand, he don't understand what lifestyle design is. And when okay. I start when I start to blurt out and, and throw out my 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 um what do you call my blueprint of of right. of, of lifestyle design to him and yes. he watches me, he's gonna look at me like um nice meeting you. It it's been nice. Okay, so watch this. Firstly, if he doesn't, because some people don't have it called lifestyle design. They may call it a five-year plan, whatever. Yeah. But yeah. when you share with him that you have planned out your goals and mm -hmm. aspirations and mm -hmm. that you're looking to reach these, if he doesn't become excited, if he doesn't become intrigued or curious, mm -hmm. then you have to reconsider his mental positioning. Because even if he don't know what it is and he doesn't have his own, if he's not interested in getting one, how y'all going to work out? How that gonna look? So you trying to save your twenty? Are you trying to save your twenty percent to buy the house? And he's just like, oh, well, I thought you know we would just kind of figure it out as we go along. <laughs> how, do you, how do you figure it out? What? How do you do that? Like you can buy a house by just like do you have like just millions in the bank that you can just figure yeah. it out? Yeah. So with that man. When you get him, if he's not intrigued or interested, you kind of have to question what's going on there. Because what should happen is, he's like, really, what is lifestyle design? And you tell him what it is. He's like, wow, you thought that stuff through? And you'll share it with him and say, you know what, sir? I could get you the same lifestyle design because it's, it's a worksheet. 
How about I give it to you and we sit down and talk about it? Mm -hmm. He should be like, okay, cool. You give him the worksheet, he work on his, and then you guys come together and you match it up, which will help because what if he says he wants to live on, and this happens, this is a true story, where the dude said he wanted to have 40 acres of farmland with a big house and he wanted to grow crops. Mm -hmm. Well, my girlfriend mm -hmm. was a city girl who was like closer to a Kim Kardashian kind of chick. And so she was like, farmland? Crops? <laughs> oh, this ain't This, 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 <laughs> this whoa, we kind of, our trajectory is just a little. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so that's what would happen with that. And, the, and the, the worksheet, the lifestyle design that I have is actually designed for couples and singles. So one we don't have could. That conversation. We don't have those conversations, Tiangelo, when, you know and, right. I know, and I know Steve Harvey also talks about that as well. You know, when, there are certain things yeah. that you need to discuss up front. Don't just get caught up in the tall, dark, and handsome, you know, right. kind of a thing and, and who is so sexy and whatever. What, what are his plans? How do you fit into his life? How do, does, you know, and the reverse, how does he fit into mm -hmm. yours? Well, do you want to have children? You have to talk about money. You know, D'Angelo, that money is the one thing that can divide two people. Right. right. One yeah. thing, the Definitely. money and the children, you know, and, and, and how they are grown and, and the whole mm -hmm. religious aspect about it. And all of these things are, are make or break. You have to understand you these things before and you have to be willing and prepared to let go. I mean, it's hard when you're dating and you want somebody into your life. But when you realize, I need to be honest with myself. Yes, he's mm -hmm. attractive. Yes, he looked like he was potential, but mm, 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 mm. I don't know if I can compromise on this. And he may be well, you know, the same thing about you too. Well, okay, so even to your statement about, like, when it comes to lifestyle design, that's like, you know, a deeper level. I'm going to have to take you back a step, though. I, we got, I got to go back another step. Mm -hmm. Because before we even get to lifestyle design, the number one dating rule, okay, mm -hmm. my number one mm -hmm. dating room for all of my girlfriends <laughs> is you have to make sure the man meets the bottom line. Right there. The bottom line. What, what is bottom, the bottom line? What's the bottom line? Right. I'm <laughs> got you. I got you. It's three minimums. The man has to come to the table with three minimums. Okay. Number one, he has to have his own place of living where you can come visit. Okay. So none of that I live with my mama kind of stuff. No, 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 no. <laughs> my cousin stand with me for a while. No, no, no. I need to, as your girlfriend, as your potential female, I need to be welcome to come to your home and we spend time together should we want to. That's number one. Number two, he needs to have his own vehicle. Now, some people live in places where cars are not a thing, which is fine. If it's not a thing, don't push it. But in Los Angeles, having cars is a thing. And in most big cities, having cars is a thing. You need to have one because I'm not going to leave my house to come pick you up to bring you to the restaurant to take you home so I can go back to my house. No, 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 no. And number three, number three is he has to have his own legal source of income or a job. You got to have a job or a legal source of income. When you come to the table, three minimums, car, place, finances, boom, Love minimum. It. And that, that's minimum. my minimum. And I, I have that bottom line. I have that bottom line as a standard. But here's what happens too, especially with the first one that you mentioned. And I mean, we could have a whole discussion around that on, on several okay. episodes. But he, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to mention it. I'm going to mention it here. The man having his own place for you to come to. Now, that's a stickler for some men because here's what they say. Why should I go and, and have a place to rent or have my own place when I could stay at my mom's house and not pay and not having to pay rent? Yes, yes, this yes, Tiangelo. Yes, Tiangelo. Give me the answer to that. Give me the answer. No. <laughs> this. No, here's your answer. It's real, here's your answer. It's a silent answer. You do this. What? <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Did you, did, could you, could you run that by me one more time? Did you say why you should have your I'll own I'll repeat place? it. I'll repeat it again. Seeing that you yeah. didn't hear well, I'll repeat it again. Right. Why Thank you. Should, yeah, yeah. Why should I have to spend money on rent or, or a house when I can stay at my mother's house and not pay the rent and save money? Although, although you're not seeing any evidence of them buying the house from the state. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> you're, not, you're not seeing How long you been at your mama's house? And what's the savings account look like? Do do you got 50 G's, 100 G's in a savings account? You, so, you're, not seeing, you're not seeing the house buying or the intention of the house buying from after living in your mother's house. You're quite Let me see your credit score. Let me see your credit score and tell me that you're saving money. <laughs> No, well, that's when that's when that's when he's gonna just get up from the table, probably leave you with a check, and that's it. And that's the best thing. Let me tell you. <laughs> let's just say, and I know oh, she's God, being funny, listeners. Thing. She's being funny, but think about this in like a, a whole worldistic view. If that person left you with the check, it's pretty awesome. Cause let's just say the dinner cost you anywhere from thirty to fifty dollars. I don't know. It just cost you fifty dollars to learn that this fool was not good for you. That's way cheaper than six months of your life. Or 18 years. Or 18 years. Yes, Lord. <laughs> or 18 years to get married out of desperation because you feel there's no man outside there for you. You know, and you and hey, your your standards are too high because they tell you that. You're expecting right. too much, right? And see, no, I believe in having too high standards. I do believe, and not, not too high. Let me change that. I don't believe in too high. I believe in having unrealistic standards, okay? And so I definitely believe it unrealistic. And that's how the bottom line came to be a thing. Because I said, at the very minimum, what do you have to have? And yeah. it's those three things. And let's just say in some cases he doesn't have, I don't know, let's say he doesn't have the house. Mm -hmm. But he don't tell with no stupid reason like my mom, whatever he said. But yeah. what if he doesn't have a house because he's like, well, you know what? I don't have my own home because right now I'm building my business. I've been going to school. I just yeah. graduated. And now I'm working. Like, he has a plan. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We can yeah. do that. We can yeah. do that. Yeah. I yeah. love that because then there's, you don't know what's going to happen. He may or may not become the success he's looking for, but he at least has the aspiration and he clearly has taken time to look at his own lifestyle design. But hold That's on. That's exciting. Here's, here's the other part. What if he says, baby, you have your own place. I could come over to your place. Again, uh, it's about the bottom line. <laughs> <laughs> and um i meet the bottom line because i have my own place the car and the funds and, uh, listen people sometimes say t i'm being a bit harsh i tried the bottom line when i designed it i was dating back in the years and i tried well, first the bottom line was designed and then i said you know what t maybe you're being too hard maybe your standards are too high because i wasn't finding what i was looking for so i put it to the side it was horrible yeah horrible because at that point our our mentals are so different you're not even trying to accomplish what i'm trying to accomplish you're yeah. trying to get by that's yeah. not what i'm trying to do my brother yeah. i'm not trying to get by i'm trying to make the next apple i'm trying to make the next amazon yeah i'm trying to yeah. make the next oprah network <laughs> okay <laughs> like yeah yeah you know. yeah yeah so you yeah. just really have to find you know, it's but, not but about you know, having... Men become desperate, Angela. People, women become desperate, men become desperate. And it's like, God, I'm not finding that person. My standards are too high, like you say. And you, and you come down, you step down. And you compromise. And then, and then it gets worse. Later down, yeah. it, might be, it might be enjoyable initially. The initial, they right. say, the guys are coming in, yes. The, the women are coming in, yes. You know, they want to marry me, whatever, whatever. You get married and then you realize, what have I done? So, because you set the precedent, you set the precedence, and they realize right. that you're compromised on that particular standard. And so when you get into the marriage and they get even more comfortable, they're like, but hey, you, you, you stepped down with that. What's your problem? You gave up mm -hmm. that because it wasn't a big deal. Yeah, you definitely, that's where, you know, of course, communication comes in. So you want to always be clear on what your goals and aspirations are. But when it comes to relationships, you know, they get, once you get, in them it gets very rocky it's yeah. definitely work it's definitely work mm -hmm. but when it comes to the bottom line if we that's like the business of the relationship that's just the business of it mm -hmm. we're not talking about emotional connection that's just business mm -hmm. if you were trying to get a, a, in a company with any person they're gonna make sure that you got you know the capital make yeah. sure that you know they're gonna check your references yeah. like that's just the basics of the mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. and if they can't get the basis of the business together what i would say is depending on the girlfriend, you have to just choose what you're trying to do. You mm -hmm. can have a hangout buddy, like a regular study. Mm -hmm. You're not trying to marry him, maybe. You could just have him as, you know, a companion, yeah. maybe a dude yeah. who helps you get your physical needs met or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, do that. 
Mm-hmm. But you ain't got to you ain't got to marry him just because of desperation, boo. Just keep him on the side. If you know he's not exactly what you need, just have a little side piece or whatever. Yeah. Don't let people judge you. you know, who cares? Who cares? Because the same thing judging you. If it's mutual, if he enjoys you, your companionship, right. your time out, there's no, yeah. there's no holding on to say, Tiangelo, we are in, co- in a committed relationship. No, you can say, hey, you are free oh. to go with who you want. I'm free to go right. with who I want. We're just hanging, and if we enjoy each other's company and we hang out more than what than who else we spend time with, that's fine. We just enjoy each yeah. other's company, but there's no there's no lifetime marriage commitment type of thing there. If, if, yeah, if it doesn't fit, if that doesn't fit that circumstance, you just have to be realistic in it. And maybe life will change. Of course, we're always evolving. We're always growing. So he might change and grow on his own, not because yeah. you tried to change him. That's but he might see he might see your efforts and get inspired and maybe change the trajectory or who knows what can happen. But you know, when it comes to desperation, it's kind of like don't be desperate. I mean, try not to be desperate. Just live your best life. Because mm-hmm. one thing when it comes to love, we can't find love. No. We don't know what love looks like. So we can't find it. No. What you have to do is make yourself a lovable person so love will want to attract itself to you. It will what come you to, to you. Work on you. You must be loved. You must love yourself first in order to attract right. the type of person that right. can see your value. You know, because mm-hmm. people look at me. People look at me, Tianjo. I've had this experience. People look at me and they're like, oh, she is too much. Uh, right. I, can't, I can't live up to that. You know, they assess me. Just I'm looking at the way I walk, the way I speak the way I carry myself, mm-hmm. and they're like, no, she's out of my league. I can't. Right. I, I, I can't. They may say hello, hi, have a conversation, and then it, it's, it ends there. If they see me somewhere else, fine. If they ask me to dance, fine. You know, that type of thing. But they know it ain't going further than that. They're even scared to approach me about anything else. They're so scared to approach me because, <laughs> because they just sense from my aura and my energy I ain't that. I, I, I'm not playing that. So then right. no, don't even come to me. Don't even step to me with certain conversations. They just don't. <laughs> it it, it kind of works in your favor, and, you know, because, again, it just allows you to weed out the, the, yeah. the foolishness and the buffoonery of it. In today's world, you know, we all, in every world, we all want love. We all want to be loved and be cared for and, and to give love in return. And, um, in this digital world, it definitely makes it harder. Mm-hmm. But we just have to remember that I have to be my best self That's right. and love will come to you. I've been in my personal my relationship now for six years mm-hmm. and I was not looking for it when I, I, I was in LA, 29 years old, dipping it and doing it. I mean, doing it, okay? <laughs> And we were traveling to Miami, my friends and I. We would travel to Chicago. We would just be living the life, life. okay? Yeah. And just dating and having fun. You could date five, four or five people if you can keep up with it. You yeah. don't have to sleep with them all. You just have mm-hmm. fun. And you guys go out and go skating, go to the movies or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Come to the house for game night and yeah. just enjoy yourself. And then literally from the distance, far out was the- <laughs> Literally, it was crazy. I was like, "Wait, wait! You want to what? You, you want to date? Like what? Are you serious?" Like it, like wow. you suddenly don't even understand the language because you forgot all about that. You're like, "What are you?" I, I did. I did. I did. <laughs> because yeah. you be thinking you found it, like you be like, "Oh, I got one. Okay, this is gonna work." Yeah. And then you were like, three or four months in, you like, "Okay, wait. This ain't this this ain't gonna work." You know what? <laughs> I'm gonna just stop. Yeah, no. Yeah. And so I really, and that it worked out and it was such a blessing because it worked in a way that I could not have figured it. Mm-hmm. But I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a redirect this for a second. I want to finish that story with Rebecca <laughs> really quick. Yeah. Um, so Rebecca, she did her lifestyle design. And then once she created out the different areas, you then have to break down each area to figure out where you want to focus your energy and mm-hmm. what will you work on first. And so that's when you get into like, I had her buy a journal to write it all out. Like literally talk about blueprints. You know how they build these structures. They have like thick folders and binders of all the electricity, all the plumbing, all the furniture. Like you said earlier, the wallpaper, the (laughs) desk. (laughs) Yeah. All All of that. that 
Right, it's mapped out. And so, granted, you don't want life to be so stagnant and as stale as a building. No, because it won't. It won't happen that way. But at least you have a heading and a direction. You won't look up and ask yourself, how did I end up with four kids by a man I don't even like? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that, I have a girl, I have a good, good girlfriend, one of my besties from high school. <laughs> She's a lawyer today. She always knew she wanted to be like Claire Huxtable from the Cosby show. And so <laughs> she always wanted to be Claire Huxtable. What she didn't account for was she was going to have the same number of children as Claire Huxtable. <laughs> no, but you can't, no, no, no. You can't say you want to be Claire Huxtable and, and the whole package don't come. It, 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 it goes. It goes. True. Ask the True. universe. You ask the universe for something, the whole package comes. It doesn't. Honey, it, and she got the package. It the doesn't discriminate. Of- the universe don't know the difference between right <laughs> or wrong or yes or no. You say you right. want it, that's what it gives you. <laughs> I'm so with you. The yeah, only that's part- what it gives you. you can, and you can't come back to the universe and say, I didn't ask for that. I didn't want this part. Take it back. No, it's <laughs> not like that. It, is, uh, and this, right. is why, this is why you have to be careful what you wish for because when it does come in front of you you're like you can't be like what and then, <laughs> this is not quite what i was looking for but here's the funny part clearly the universe has a, a sense of humor of because course. what it didn't give her was she did not get uh cliff huxtable as her <laughs> husband that's what she <laughs> did <laughs> so she probably, she probably wasn't as specific she knew right. she to be like Claire, but she wasn't as specific with the Cliff part. Mm. Right, about the husband part of the it. The husband and part. So, she was um, specific about the Claire. That's why she got the kids. But she wasn't right. specific about the Claire. But, and that's a great <laughs> point. You have to be specific. It's like what you mentioned, the plumbing, the wiring, the wallpaper, the everything, right. the color. Right. You have to be very, very specific. The universe does not joke about this, these kind of things. It doesn't know right from wrong, yes or no. It just knows what you want. So you have to be very, very specific. specific. Yeah. And that's, so and that's how the lifestyle, the lifestyle, <laughs> lifestyle design also helps you as far as writing out what you want so you can see it. So it's a part of your psyche. So yeah. it's part of your subconscious mind. And yeah. we talk about, I, I also talk about focus is power. Wherever um, focus goes, power flows. Power flows, yeah, yeah. Right. And so if you're focusing on all the stuff that doesn't matter, that's the stuff that will always be in front of your face. And just for the listeners, here's a perfect example. If you decide like one day, oh, here's a perfect, here you go, here you go. Have you ever noticed that when you buy a, a new car or if you buy a new shirt, that all of a sudden you start seeing that car and shirt all around the place? All over, yeah. Right. It's not that the cars or shirts weren't there before. It's just now in the forefront of your mind. Yeah. Yeah. And so now you see the car or the shirt that's been there all the time. All you just yeah. didn't notice. Yeah, your attention so, is now directed there. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Same thing with your goals and, and your goals and aspirations, people. Like whatever you're thinking about all day. Matter of fact, Earl Nightingale, he's a great speaker. Exactly. He has books out. Yeah. He talks think about you become what you think about. Whatever yeah. you think about is what you're gonna become. So that's right. That's right. So you have to be careful. The thoughts, and this is why the delete and block approach is the way, because you have to be careful with what you pour into your mind. I'm very, very careful. People, people are careful about the food that they put into their body. That's one thing. But right. your mind right. is the one thing you really have to protect the most. Because once you protect your mind, your mind is going to help you decide what you put into your body, who you surround yourself with, everything, everything. Your mind, your mind, you have to protect it. It's different from your brain, people. That's different. Your mind. Yes. Your and you have to speak it into existence. Yeah. One thing, I find for, so for the people listening, if you're saying, okay, T, I hear the lifestyle design, I hear the bottom line, I, I get all that. What's the one thing I can do today? What's the one yeah. thing I can do today? So um, the, I, <clears throat> for those who need to work on self, the I am amazing exercise, you do that every single day, that's a good one. But the other one I'm going to give you today is to start saying out loud the thing that you want the thing that you want to become. So when I was younger and I wanted to be a professional dancer, I lived in a city where dancing wasn't a thing. So I started telling everybody, oh, yeah, I'm a professional dancer. Yeah. I started telling everyone. I just started saying it. I was 19 years old, decided I was a professional dancer. Yeah. Just decided. And you know what happened? <laughs> I started having dancer problems. 
I started getting auditions. I ended up joining a, um, going to a college that had an amazing dance program. Yeah. Then at the program, I saw the stage. And I was like, hey, are those students on that amazing stage? Yeah. I think nine months later, I was on that stage. Yeah. I have yeah. since been able to be on the red carpet of the Academy Awards. I've worked at one of the top um, country clubs in Los Angeles. I'm not saying this to be boastful. I'm saying this because I spoke it into existence. Yeah. That's but Maham, what but Muhammad Ali, but hold on. Muhammad Ali said he was the greatest even before he was the greatest. And they were laughing yes. at him. They were laughing at him. And he was like, he's right. the greatest. He's a legend. There's nobody and, better than me. I mean, and, and the man became the greatest. The man is still living on. Even though past his death, he is the greatest. I said it. I said and, I, and I'm saying it and I'm feeling my, my blood running through my, my entire body, <laughs> you know, right. just, because, just because he said, this is who he is. And he said it even when he was struggling, now starting off as a boxer, he is the greatest. He's a legend. He will be known all over. I mean, and look, his daughter, look at his daughter sounds just like him. She yeah, sounds beautiful. just like him and she ended up into boxing. I mean, what a way to, to, to carry on the legacy. Oh right. my goodness, yeah, Angelo, we have been on this show for an hour. Believe it or not, I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm going to kick you off my show. I want to... Oh my God. <laughs> I want to... Say... We just got started. Um, you, need... <laughs> you need to come back on. But I want to switch over to your website to highlight a few things on your website here now. Let me see if I can do that quickly. Give me a second here. And while you're doing that, I'll share with the listeners, um, to get more information, mm -hmm. you can definitely go to themalegirlfriend.com where there's a um, number of videos and different chats. I mean, different ways you can reach out to me. So if you want more questions or have questions, I'm more than happy to be of assistance. Also, follow me on Instagram. I'm always on Instagram. I love hanging out on Instagram. And um, lastly, I'll share that the new Male Girlfriend podcast will be coming out here soon. So you can definitely swing over to the podcast and continue this conversation because, of course, we're going to have Ms. LaFont on the show. And oh, definitely. Hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> I love it. I so love it. So, yeah. I, but I spend, you also find me on Insta, uh, Facebook, too. On um, Facebook, Twitter, all the social medias, the male girlfriend. But I hang out mostly on Facebook and Instagram. Awesome. The only thing that's missing is this nice little, what do you call that again? The hairstyle. We're, we're, we're missing that. Uh, you put it all. Oh, up. I know. I, I miss it. You know this. I changed hairstyles so much that I, I wore that hair, that the mohawk looking through the frohawk. I wore that for years, and so right now I'm actually thinking if I want to go like red or blonde. I'm I don't blonde. know. I'm blonde right now. I'm blonde right now. Very blonde. See, blonde on black skin. I may Can have to. It? I might need to jock yo fresh. Oh like, yeah. Oh yeah. But you, but hold on. You, you you can't overshadow me now. You can't. You you know. <laughs> No, no. Clearly, I cannot overshadow you. No, it's you can't overshadow be, me. Okay, I'm just no, letting it's you know. Just be too, it'll be just two amazing people that's beaming right. with light. That's right. That's right. And then when we go dancing, we, you know, I mean, we're just the it couple. Ow. I'm already there. I'm dancing <laughs> now, honey. I'm getting it. Uh, yes. That's right. We're going to be the it couple. Okay? So here oh, you are. Here you are doing your talk. And I want people to check out this video. And you have, why book Tiangelo for your next event? And people are giving some fabulous testimonial and it's all women. I ain't see no men here. Mm. No, you know, <laughs> there aren't any. And um, if you, what you call it, uh, where should you go? Go to the top of the site and let's click, um, click a, da, 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 selfies. There we go, click the selfies. Those are fun pictures as well. Um, <laughs> just of yeah. helping amazing, beautiful women do amazing beautiful things nice this is the man okay. to be jealous of people this is the man oh. that has with all the beautiful women so if you want to get in please come <laughs> you know you know what you remind me of there's this film that will smith did i'm sure you know what i'm talking about when he was helping all these men. what was the name of that um i know what you're talking about because he was in with the um the Hitch. beautiful latina Hitch. lady Hitch. 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 Oh yes. my God. And he was helping this guy to, to yes. talk to this woman. And it was like, yes. oh my God. <laughs> that was a good film. That was a good one. That was really, really good. That was really, really good. And then he himself couldn't even help his, his own self 
get right. the woman who, had, who he was in love with. Isn't that amazing? Right. You can give good advice, but you're not taking the advice for yourself. There's some men like that. There's some women you like know, it's, it's. I think people as a whole are like that, even doctors and everything, oh, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's, it's part of your business. Even for myself, it, it can be a, it can be challenging for me to dream it, plan it, live it. In my own life, it can be yeah. difficult for me. The dream it part for me is easy. Mm -hmm. The planning it for myself yeah. is way harder. I can help yeah. everybody else plan their stuff out like instantly. Yeah, instantly. Yeah. But for myself, I'd be like, why can't I figure this out? What's wrong with me? <laughs> So, but I have coaches. I also have coaches. People, I recommend if you can go to therapy. I go to therapy. Yeah. I have mentors. I have um, I have coaches that I work with. And you have you know, me. And you have me. I'll help you dream and plan it, live it. I am so for it. No, we are definitely going to have to help me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious with my new podcast. I'm so nervous. I just got the microphone the other day. There's nothing to be nervous about. Just start talking. You're doing fabulous. We have been on this show for, I tell you, one hour and five minutes. I'm kicking you <laughs> off my show right now. So the male okay. girlfriend, the male girlfriend, the lifestyle architect, we have been talking about going through hell so you don't get stuck in it. And I'm trying to get back on my page here. Give me a minute. Yeah. D you know, keep going through hell. If you think that you're going through hardship, you're not going through nothing. Just enjoy hell while you're going through it. The main thing is to keep going through it. Don't pitch tent. Don't stop at the store. Don't start to wear hellish brand clothing. And be careful with the hellish people over there. They will try to make friends with you and encourage you to stay in hell town. But no, you're not having that. You're not having that. Walk with your phone. Remember to make sure you have Wi-Fi. There is Wi-Fi in hell, I'm sure. Delete and block. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're with it. I'm sure they're very with it down there, wherever they are. Just make sure you are connected, okay? Walk with your charger and make sure that you're connected and make sure that you delete and block them. <laughs> there you go. The delete you go. and block. And have your lifestyle design from Tiangelo Bell while you're at it so that you can say, you don't fit into this plan. I'm so sorry. You know, you don't fit into this plan. X you out. That's just and for those, I'll also share, Corinne, and for those who want to get the lifestyle design, just mm -hmm. go to themailgirlfriend.com and shoot me an email and I'll send it to you. I'm more than happy to get that tool to all the listeners. Well, hello. You better start with me first. Please make sure you send mine. Thank you very much. As soon as we're done, <laughs> as as we're done you're getting it. Thank you so much. And this is where mm -hmm. I'm going to be saying, I'm going to kick Tiangelo off my show at this point because he has taken up all of my time. Right? <laughs> <laughs> he has taken up all of my time. But I am sure, I am sure that those who are listening and those who will be listening We'll be having a wonderful time just listening. And we'll be so, you know, the hope and the inspiration will be there for you that you realize, I can do this. I can live my best life. I don't have to stay in this, which is what we don't want people to do. We don't want you to stay in it or feel that you have no other choice but to stay in it. You have a choice, you make the choice and the decision. And I want to thank Tiangelo for being on my show Between the Lines, sharing his wisdom with us. He's youthful. The man is not 50, 60 years old. What is going on here? You know, he's young and he's telling us what to do about relationships and life. Learn from the young babes. Isn't that what they said in, in, in the Bible? Learn from the young babes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, D'Angelo, for being on Between the Lines. Thank you for having me. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it.